The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. We're going to take a look at the German DAX with the daily chart, followed quickly by the 60-minute. You can see the matchup that the market is overbought, so we should be looking at a, a correction, maybe even a half a down day in stocks. That could happen. Maybe not in our lifetime, but we'll have to wait and see. All right, we had a mediocre jo jobs number. I guess that stopped the market from going straight up, but maybe that's just a little early in the day. We'll have to wait and see. Okay, I'm going to run by this one more last time, and let's get this up here. Here's where I think we are, folks. Let me get this up here so we can take a look. Here's where we were on March the 9th, 2009. Three drive to a bottom pattern. You can see that the S, the Dow Jones. Uh, you'll notice here this was on the fifth. I did this over the weekend, and you know that the Dow Jones closed there at 7,000 and change. Well, the actual low was. 6,600. That was the exact 61% retracement of the low from 1982. So uh, it was an important low to, uh, to pay attention to at that time. Okay, let's move over to uh, one other thing that I wanted to mention here. This is the Bradley model, of course. And the Bradley model is at a key day today, especially with the lunar eclipse that we have with the full moon. And then we have these series of planets. And I think this is what really is uh, very, very important. You don't see this very often, folks. And these, these things that we talk about with astrology, they're nothing more than uh, uh, synodic periods. In other words, days between cycles. That's really uh, what you have. You know, it's just pretty much uh, what we're watching here. But today you have the, the sun is conjunct Mercury. That is combus done by T.G. Butani, he was an Indian astrologer, highly uh, influential to stock prices. We have also, we have um, uh, Uranus, is, is it's a standard, uh, <laughs> is it's, it's a direct station. Uh, but the big ones come in here uh, on Sunday and Monday. We have Venus is conjunct uh, Saturn, uh, Mercury is conjunct uh, Venus, and Saturn is conjunct Venus. So all of these planets, and then again on Monday, you have the Sun conjunct Mercury again, because it's moving back and forth quickly. The Sun is conjunct Saturn, and then we have Venus sextile Uranus. Folks, th this is equivalent of a uh, uh, of a whole bunch of stuff coming together. If you were to look at bowling pins, that's pretty much what you'd be looking like. They're all lined up together. Uh, you don't see it very often. You know, I mentioned uh, several times that, you know, we saw it in 1974 uh, in October, and we all saw it again in December of 1974 when the Dow hit 540. And then, of course, we saw it again in 19, uh, well, 2000. And then we saw it again in uh 2008, and now 2008 wasn't nearly as big as the one we have now. This is this is as big as the one that we had in March of 2009. They they they're very very large. The, this means that there's just a lot of cycles coming together, uh, very similar to what like we had in in uh, August of 1982, when the market was uh, setting at a 61 percent retracement. Now this one's upside down, because there's more greed in the market than there is fear, and so. It's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen. Someone asked me a question about the top on September the 3rd, uh, 1929. There was very little there. There was within a day or two of a big lunar cycle, but the, uh, having all these other things there was not there during 1982, excuse me, 1929. And really, the reasoning probably was it really didn't mean anything because the market went down just for three years uh, into 19 July of 1932. Of course, we were in a depression for four or five years after that. That didn't end until World War uh, II started. So uh, it took the market 27 years to get back above those highs of 1929. And whenever this top is in, 
this old cowboy, that's it. I mean, I'll never see another higher high than that one. But we'll see what's going to happen uh, from that level. Very, very important. One other key thing to remember here now, these cycles are so accurate that if we come in here on Wednesday, the 15th of January, and this market is not going down, uh, then there's something probably wrong, and they're just not going to work. And maybe it's one of those times where astrology doesn't work, and we see that <laughs> a, 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 a quite a lot. So uh, that's what I'm seeing. All I know is that this is a this is a big one, and it's worth your uh, attention uh, as I see it. See, uh, well, there, there's virtually no one out there that is, you know, really very saying there's any danger out there at all. I mean, none. The, the, uh, the fear index is uh, <clears throat> off the charts. There's, there's nobody has any fear. So the greed index is at almost 100 percent and uh, doesn't stay there very long either. Uh, this is a... <sighs> This is a monumental thing that's happening, folks. <clears throat> Remember, I'm a technician, and, uh, you know, I, I've been totally wrong on Apple. You know, I thought Apple was going to make a, uh, you know, a big 1.618 expansion, and we went a, a, a easy one and a quarter, one and a half percent higher on that. But uh, we'll have to uh, see what's going to happen. This is big. That's all I can tell you. And uh, we'll see how it uh, lines up. I'll show you what it looks like one more time. This is the one from 19, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, 2009, March of 2009. If you can see, all these planets are in the two houses right over there, Capricorn and Aries. And then to, to, on the one we have now going on here again, we're sitting there in Aries one more time. And also Capricorn, we're not quite in Aries yet, but we're in Capricorn again. And uh, you'll see that that's, uh, we'll get this up here so we can take a quick look at it. And don't forget, now, Capricorn is where Billy Ray Valentine was born. I don't even know when uh, Eddie Murphy was born. I think he just, that's just part of the, the news. Oh, by the way, folks, somebody really cool that I got to know uh, was uh, Buck Henry died last night. He was the guy that was responsible for Get Smart and uh, so many great shows. Uh, he was a very, very close friend of uh, uh, Don Adams, who, you know, was Mr. Agent 99. And also uh, the fact that uh, he was also a good friend of, uh, oh, dear, Tim Conway. And uh, it's just he was a really nice guy, just a super nice guy. Uh, just uh, and Mel Brooks, too, was a, was a friend of his. Actually, Buck Henry lived on the same block that uh, Mel Brooks lives in, in Beverly Hills. So we'll see. All right, let's move on here to a couple other things that we want to talk about. Uh, if you have any questions, folks, it's 877 Nine two seven six six four eight. So we'll see uh, what's going to happen. Uh, we just been. Uh, uh, he was in. Oh, he was born in April. April third, nineteen sixty one. Thank you, Marshall. You're very. You and Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, White are getting uh, co competing for the Google Champion of the Year. All right. Well, oh my gosh, it's almost the first break time already, and uh, we'll get moving on here. To some, I wanted to share this uh, Nasdaq picture that we looked at yesterday. I want to discuss that when we get back from the break. Because uh, we, we ex <laughs> yeah, nobody can compete with David. You're right, Marshall. Uh, you'll notice here that uh, this, this NASDAQ went all the way up to, I believe, 9038 or 9040 last night during the, uh, during the big run up. So we'll see. 877 927 6648. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks, and I posted the chart of the banking index. Uh, I wanted you to take a look at this ABCD pattern that is uh, – been fulfilled from uh, January, or actually December of last year of 18, and uh, you'll notice that we did complete that ABCD pattern. We did not make a new high uh, in the banking index. We missed it by uh, quite a bit. Of course, it's still early. It might still do it, but the fact that the banking index was lagging the market is kind of surprising because that's where the money is, folks, and uh, as Bernstein and Woodward said, follow the money. So uh, I don't know if it means that we're, we're the market is slightly overbought, as you might uh, imagine here. The fact that we've been up, what, 14 weeks, I believe, in the uh, NASDAQ without a, you know, well, we had a serious correction uh, on the first uh, show of those rockets the other day, but the market rallied uh, another 200 handles uh, very easily. So that's it. Let's look at this uh, this chart here of the NASDAQ. I wanted to uh, go over it with you here because uh, this was the pattern. Now, we've made a higher high today, so we didn't make any lower low, but the low on the day of the rockets hit was 86.70, and we rallied 300 handles already. In fact, 400 handles. We got up to uh, 90.40, I believe, uh, last night, which is a, a a 1.618 expansion of that move instead of 1.414, it went up to 1.618. Okay, uh, question about a stock that's been in the news all the time and is acting just horribly. Let's take a look at this. Folks, I, I don't follow this. Here is, uh, I'll, I'll do the Japanese in in just a minute, uh, Marshall. Hold on here. Here is the uh, Twitter. Look at this, how, how negative this stock is, folks. You see the giant ABCD up there at 45, and you can see the little red uh, uh, butterfly pattern that is there. I mean, that's, uh, that's really signaling that something is going to happen. But then there must have been some news here in October because it broke down. And, and since November, when the market's been going straight up, this market can't even make a 382 retracement. This is a sign of extreme weakness. Uh, we'll see that. Look, look on the far left there in July of uh, 2018. You, you'll see. Uh, yeah, yeah, 2018. Uh, there was a big gap there, and it took uh, well over a year to fill that gap. 
So uh, I don't know. It just looks like a very, very weak market, and it shouldn't be because it's in the news all the time. I don't understand why it doesn't, uh, you know, get to get a little bit of a boost. But we'll have to do that one thing at a time. Give me a second here, folks. And I wanted to uh, do one other chart, uh, one other stock that someone has asked us about. And uh, just so we can cover it for them. And uh, I believe that's the thing. Doggone it. I can't find it. Uh, well, let's move to the next one that I want to talk about. And that is this. Uh, Hold on. This is one that we really like, and this is this natural gas. We've tested that uh, 2021 level several times, and we're now trading above uh, 22.2. So that's a very positive sign. It's been five days to do this, so watch for a little bit of a retracement here, and we might be able to uh, see a spot where we can uh, add to the positions if we see that. Yes, that last night the high in the NASDAQ was uh, 90.55. We're trading a little bit below that right now, but uh, that's still early in the day. We'll have to do that as we uh, do one thing at a time. All right, I'm trying to find that other stock that someone asked me about. I know I did the chart on the darn thing, and I cannot find it. But let's move over here to the platinum market because this is one that uh, is very, very interesting here, folks. With the collapse in gold, all we did in platinum after we made that double top, we took out the highs of uh, September the 3rd. That was the big, uh, we had a big uh, new, uh, full moon then. It's just like we have a full moon uh, today along with the solar eclipse. We took out that and we backed off exactly like we did in December. Had a little six, uh, five, six day pullback, stopping a key support at 960. And then we've had a nice rally coming off that. And it looks higher in platinum as long as we can stay above that last low, which I believe was at roughly 956, 954. So that's another one that looks uh, very, very interesting for sure. So th those are uh, helpful. Folks, when I talk about the Astro stuff, I, I, I know it's, diff it's difficult for me because I don't understand a lot of it. Now, oh, I'll cover the green report in just a second, Bob. But uh, the astrology is really difficult. The good part is, is we got some really smart people as our guests. We got Bill Meridian, Tim Boss, Arch Crawford, uh, Norm Winsky. I mean, all these guys know that stuff pretty good. All I'm looking at is the simple things that Dr. Miller told me uh, that I put in my book, Astro Cycles, A Trader's Viewpoint, many years ago. It's what got me interested in it because when you see these conjunctions and oppositions occurring at these major points in the market, something with those cycles has to be there that means something. And how much, you know, I'm not sure. All I know is the patterns are just incredible. I'm working on a program now with John Jameson uh, on the statistics of these markets. Because if you look at the opening price, which is very important, and then ask serious questions to the market, like uh, what is the probability if the stock, if the E-mini S&P closes higher and above the opening, what is the probability of the maximum correction you're going to get for the next day? Does anybody want to guess what that is? Now, listen to what I just said. If the S&P closes above the open, okay, all right? If it closes above the open, like it closes above the open yesterday, what is the maximum correction you're going to get on the next day? The judges are coming. No, it's a it's a it's a point figure, uh, Marshall. Three eight two would be a good guess, but uh, it actual comes out at ten point five. So uh, yeah, that that's pretty interesting. And that's over a long period of time, folks. We had uh, several hundred samples on that. Now you ask it other questions. You know, uh, what is the what is the best opening time for the E mini S and P? It's different than it is for treasury bonds. It's different than it is for foreign exchange. And those are the statistics that we're, we're compiling to uh, give us a little bit better edge to do something mechanical. Because if you're uh, in the market and you have something mechanical that tells you that it wants to go higher, that's a big edge. And all it is is statistics, just like in baseball. It's all about numbers. So if you ever love that movie Moneyball about Billy Bean, you will, you know, I think you'll like it because that's all what it's about. In fact, uh, it was John Henry who owns the Boston Red Sox, a very famous hedge fund commodity guy. Met him way back and we were just kids at the same time back there in 1978. But uh, he he uh, he certainly did a tremendous job with his uh, portfolios. Okay, let's move on uh, to a couple of things here. 
that I wanted to mention. I cannot find that other stock that I wanted to mention. Dog, got it. Oh, about the uh, Japanese yen. Let's uh, let's move this up because I haven't updated it, folks. But I can tell you where we are right now. Uh, you'll notice that that 382 that we made there at night at 107.70. That was on the day the rockets hit. We went up to uh, we we took out these highs here at 109.70, folks, 109.60. So we've broken through that to the upside. So it looks like that uh, everything is copacetic in the market and the risk guys uh, have risk on still. And there's no reason to think that they don't have risk on because the market, you know, continues to go higher. We're up today and it hasn't even uh, backed off uh, very much. Uh, the gold market. <clears throat> okay, let's take, we'll take a break and then we'll talk about the gold market. 877 Nine two seven six six four eight. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
All right, we're back, folks. And uh, there is a USDA crop production report for grain stocks, supply and demand, winter wheat. Comes in at 11 o'clock this morning. Thank you, Ruby, for posting that for us. This is a game changer, folks. This is a big report. All the boys are watching this one very, very carefully. I think that if the market breaks, you should take advantage of some of those breaks to, to try to buy because I think these grains have turned the corner. But uh, it's better to wait one day or wait till after the report, no matter what. Because sometimes it is a really, a really, really crazy one. So I would wait till after the report and then look at it. I will be covering it in the futures part of the newsletter, of course. Uh, it comes out this weekend, and we'll be watching it uh, very much. Okay, Tommy O'Brien's telling me it's the wolf moon, and the eclipse kicks off the first of 13 full moons in 2020. That's uh, 13 is uh, one a month, right? That's about right. One every 27 and a third days. Sounds pretty good. Okay, let's move on to talk about, uh, see, I can't find that stock. Someone else asked me about a stock, and I can't re Oh, it was about uh, Boeing, in fact, and all the stuff that's going on in Boeing. And uh, it's actually held those lows pretty well. But uh, the, the emails that came out from the employees that were working on this uh, plane, oh, it was terrible. It was terrible press for them. I mean, I, I, I felt really sorry that uh, somebody let that stuff get out. I know they wouldn't have wanted to do that no matter what, but uh, that's the way it goes. It's very, very dangerous. All right, I want to make a correction here also here in the Japanese yen because we did not take out those highs. You'll notice that we've hit that 61% retracement now. We've hit it one, two, three times in a row. We hit it once in November, once in December, and or twice in December, and again uh, today, right at that uh, 109.62 uh, level. Until we go popping above that, it's still in this trading range. Now, that's very important because with all this stuff that's been going on, with all the power that's been going on in the stock market, wow, who's, who knows? We'll have to wait and see. Folks, I don't know if you know this or not, but the United States shot a plane down in 1988. Uh, I think it was a Korean airline, a Korean airliner or something. I don't even remember. But we shot a plane down by accident, too. So it's not just uh, it's just not them that did it, whoever did it. Who knows? But if you ever saw the uh, – yeah, from the USS Vincennes, you're right. You must have been uh, paying attention to the news this morning, Mr. Uh, Z. Uh, but anyway – you know, folks, what's going on political is really uh, is really kind of crazy. But you know, that's the way it is this time around. So we'll we'll see what really happens. I'm just a little concerned about all the crazy stuff that's going on in the world. But there's nothing else you can do. There is a big election tonight uh, or tomorrow in Taiwan, and this will this will be affecting uh, China and Hong Kong and some of the other parts of that area too. Because if there's a big upset there, that could mean that China is trying to get back control of Hong Kong, Macau, and Taiwan. Whether that'll happen or not, we'll have to wait and see. We'll let the political pundits uh, worry about that. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. I just wanted to bring to your attention here. Uh, get the weed up here to take a look at it. You can see here. We've had it, we're having a little bit of a sell-off here in the wheat, and uh, see, look at that. See, there's a perfect. David's posted the price of Boeing. It's up a, a dollar today with all that bad news. That, that's not a that's not a bad deal, folks. But look at look at the wheat here. Now, if you uh, the last time we had a good correction in wheat, and wheat follows these lunar cycles like <laughs> a lot. So I'll be expecting a bottom here in wheat here. And the last correction we had was down. We went from 45, you know, down to uh, to 50. We dropped about 37 cents. Okay, so if we drop 37 cents from the high at 67, that's going to mean that around 37, around 5.37 in wheat, down about 19 cents. 18, 19 cents, where we are right now is going to be pretty strong support. We've done that correction twice already. Why wouldn't we do it the third time if that's what it's going to do? So if you're looking at something, you know, take a look at it. Take a look at the coffee. I don't have it updated. Uh, I'm focusing on these currencies and bonds and everything else right now, Ruby, but I can put the coffee up so we can see. We're ready for this correction. Uh, I believe, I think we've got down to this 122 level. Let me get this up here one second. Uh, hold on, one, two, three, four, five. Let's get this up here. I believe coffee is down to about the 122, 121 level. We were looking at 120 is what we were watching 
you know, for a, uh, you know, pretty good spot to, uh, to try to get in it. So we'll see what's happened here. Anyway, that's what we have going on. We'll see what it means, whether it means anything or not, but that's, uh, that's neither here nor there. Well, something pushed stocks down a little bit. I just noticed that we dropped a little bit here, but that's still a little bit early in the day. Okay, uh, one of my limit minders went on, and I don't know which one it was. It only hit it once. That's not a good sign. So let's figure out what else we got going in here. Uh, okay, all right. One other one of the other futures contracts that I wanted to talk about are our little piggies because uh, we're they'll also be affected by the. Uh, uh oh, where are the hogs? Wow, that's terrible. I don't have the hog chart. I thought I did. Shut the front door and raise the rent. Well, not going to worry about that right now. Uh, okay, someone asked a someone asked a question. Hold on, there's that limit going limit minder going off. Uh, oh, it's E mini down here at 76 or something like that. So that mean too much, I don't think. But we'll see whether it means much or not. Okay. <clears throat> Folks, uh, I have I've had several uh, private messages here come through the den here this morning. If you'll bear with me here one second, I have to turn these limit minders off because they're starting to. Uh, oh dear, oh dear, what did I do wrong here? Yeah, bear with me here, folks. Got a tiny bit of a technical difficulty. Oh, shut the front door and raise the rent here. Just when you think you got this thing moving, okay. Uh, the main thing that I. Uh, I'm sorry, we have to put these limit minders on, and this is a really key time of the day with the market doing uh, crazy stuff. Um, the uh, the crude oil we just broke 59 a barrel again, folks. That market has topped. The gold market has topped. Last night, uh, the gold market uh, we've we've rallied exactly $17 from the low. We've had a low of uh, 46. Uh, excuse me, uh, 41. We rallied up to 58. That was exactly $17. From there, we broke down 11. 11 and 17 is exactly 61% retracement. So we're in this really tight trading range where gold is going to try to hold in here. I've already showed you the chart on platinum that looks very, very bullish. Uh, nothing is bearish about the gold as of yet. Because even though we did drop $70 a barrel, a lot of it, you know, part of that last part is emotionalism. We know that the harmonic numbers in gold work like magic. The $17, one half of the harmonic number, and uh, 70 is uh, almost twice the, 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 the 64. So uh, th this market is still acting relatively well. So whether that means a whole lot in a longer time frame or not, I'm not sure. So that's all I'm saying. So we'll look. Now we've come off about uh, 40 handles in the NASDAQ so far. We'll see if that's going to do very much. But who knows? It's still a little bit early here in the morning. And that's uh, pretty much 877-927-6648. And then we'll be right back. I think we have another break coming up. And then we will talk some more. I'm going to get that hog chart up here uh, to talk about it because I think that's going to be an interesting one. Uh, for next year also but that natural gas is one you got to pay attention to because it's down there at bottom prime bargain basement prices If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190.
The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Siphon Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, we're back, folks. And I posted the chart of gold into the room. I wanted to uh, answer this question uh uh-oh, it didn't post. Shut the front door and raise the rent. Give me a second here. I don't know why that happened. Give me a second here. Uh, let me get that gold chart up here so we can take a quick look at it. There we go. That's coffee. No, there we go. This is uh, – there's the gold chart. Uh, Mr. Z asked me a question. If this is a top, and this is a big if, what do I do – you know, for entering the position. Well, the first thing I looked at today was let the break happen, sell the first 61% retracement that came in at uh, 32.83. It's moved a little bit uh, down from that level. Okay, now the the reason now what you would do with that now is you put your stop at break even so that you don't have to risk anything. But my my game plan with the S&P will be similar to the one like we had in the gold. You notice that those bottoms that we made in gold, you see the, the, the one three five pattern, the higher bottoms, those were coming off of a three eight two retracement on a long term uh, you know daily chart. So this has told you that gold wanted to go higher, but we made the ABCD up there, which was an exact sixty one percent retracement to one dollar, folks, within one dollar. How do you do that? From 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 uh, 2011 August to yesterday was exactly 0.618 to the tick. But when you see that, you have to pay very very close attention to it. Look what happened to crude oil when it hit 68 or 69. We brought went all the way down to 54. So that's why it's important. Getting back to Mr. Z's question, this is why I do the 24/7 thing for the folks. I send out a video every night on gold. And now what I'll be doing now, starting next week, I'll be sending out a video every day of what I'm looking at in the S&P and where the key levels are. And I can tell you with a high degree of certainty that there's going to be a signal here coming in the next uh, five or six days that is going to tell you where it's going to go. It'll be very, very quick. And unless you're prepared for it, you know, you'll probably miss it. But that'll be your last chance to get on the train if the train is leaving the service like uh, like I think it is. So uh, pay attention to that. It helps a little bit. I follow, most of you know, I follow the uh, markets all night long because of the fact that I'm old and, and I have to do a lot of uh, visits to the uh, uh, a certain part of the house. But anyway, uh, it, the main thing is, is that it, it, there's going to be a really strong signal in here. It happens in every single market. This was brought to my attention by my good friend Tom Hugard, and when you see that signal, that really tells you where you are, and that's what we really want to be looking at. I'll share you a little bit of that, if I can, up here, 
and I'll show you what it is. You'll get up here to take a look. Here was the gold market. You'll notice we hit the 61% retracement. We came down and bada bing, bada boom, over a four hour period, we had a 382 retracement. And that's what I put on, it said great short. And of course we went down and touched the bottom of the chart here at 1540. We we were out of those at uh, 1554, but uh, that's neither here nor there. That's the signal that you wanna look at. Now, you know, say, why would you tell us that? You know, I, you know, I can, you, can I tell you why? Two things. One is, A, what Twentyman says, defy human nature, do the work yourself. Most of you are not even going to pay any attention. You're going to forget what I said anyway. That's the main thing. And the second thing is, is uh, you, 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 you just let it go over your head and you won't write it down. But it, it's important enough you know, that you should pay attention to that because that's going to be a big factor on whether this market is going to, uh, going to turn. Go back and prove it to yourself. Go back and look at the charts and see what happens after they you know, when they first start to break. Now that'll be that'll even be true with Apple. Now the thing is that you might have to try it two or three times before you get it right. But when you do get it right, it's really great. But if you're selling at the 382, you put your stop right above the 61% retracement, so it quantifies your risk, and you know exactly where you're standing at that point. Uh, someone's just ping me. Say, what are the what are the probabilities of this, uh, folks? Uh, the probabilities uh, of what I'm seeing in these cycles is uh, it's an ivory soap. 99.9 .9. uh, might not work, but boy, oh boy, does it have everything lined up? It's uh, it's got the fear, it's got the greed, it's got everything. Boy, it's got uh, everything you could possibly ask for. So. That's what I'm paying attention to. Whether it's going to mean much or not, we'll have to wait and see. That's the, the key to be uh, paying attention to, as near as I can tell. Uh, hold on here. How much is that? That says uh, 22. Oh, these things are all screwed up. Oh, this, I got a little bit of a data problem, boys and girls. Uh, there should be some support coming in uh, in the S&P at uh, 3273. Uh, that's a 61% retracement of the last si significant low we had at 3264. But whether that'll mean too much or not, uh, I'm not absolutely sure. Oh dear, what's going on here? Refresh this uh, today. Oh brother, uh, darn it! Just give me a second. I have to do something here, folks. It's causing me a tiny bit of problems. There we go. We're all right. Okay, now we got it rocking and rolling. I think we'll be all right in here. Okay, so uh, th watch uh, 3273, folks, uh, and be and below 3269, that could be the first sign that something has uh, has changed. That would be the first time that something has changed. Now I. We'll have to wait and see if it does that or not, but that's what we're watching as we as we go through and see some of these. Uh, okay, uh, let me move on here to a little bit. Uh, okay, uh, all right, just give me a second here. Someone asked me a question about the time, uh, whether I you know do timing things. Not very often. I usually uh, you know look at the bar, bar charts. I do some simple time counts. Uh, that's really what I'm doing, and uh, when I'm doing shorter-term trading on the 15-minute and 30-minute, I, I like to start out with the four-hour chart because that gives you six or seven weeks. Then you go down to your hourly, then to your 30-minute, and then I don't go any lower than 15-minute usually unless I'm using the AI, and that takes you down to uh, the real finite move of what the what the market's uh, looking at. So that's uh, that's what I'm paying attention to. Uh, so far here uh, today. Whether that uh, helps or not, I don't know. Uh, regarding the gold, if we can get gold above 1560, folks, that would be a that would be an interesting spot because all we've been able to do now is make that $17 correction. But if we can get it above 1560, the next level to look at is 1567. That's the 382 retracement on that gold move. So it's just like I mentioned to you in the gold before, watch 1567. We get it above 1567. Gold could have, uh, you know, have gain back on, but right now it's in a bearish formation after hitting that uh, major Fibonacci level uh, that we're watching. So we'll see how this all works out. All righty, let's see. The next thing we want to pay attention to is the uh, crude oil, the next support in crude oil. Folks, we have broken $6 a barrel in crude oil in just a matter of three days and when the thing was supposed to be as bullish as it could possibly be. Uh, now here again, let's just bring this up so you can take a look at it because we're, we're, look, we're, set, we're setting right over major support 
as we're as we're talking right in here, right around this 59 level, 59 to 5850. 5850 is a very key level because here again, that's a that's where those old highs were before you broke out at point D. That's very very important. So we need to hold 5850 in the uh, crude oil. So far we've we've done that. Uh, the low yesterday was 5866. So as long as we can stay above 5850. I believe we've got a chance here to have a little bit of a rally, but this was another one that hit an exact 61% retracement. You can't make this stuff up, folks. You just can't do it. 877-927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today if you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, I want to just uh, quickly review the patterns that we do because when you do these patterns, A, B, C, D, 1, 3, 5, Gartley's, Butterflies, all those all those patterns give you one thing, and that is the way to control risk. Because when these markets fail, look look what happened to Apple. It had an absolutely beautiful beautiful pattern. It worked for like six dollars for about two hours one morning, and then it uh, turned around and went straight up. You don't know 
you know, what's going to happen? Nobody does. That's the reason why these markets operate the way they do. All you can do is put the odds in your favor, protect your backside, and the only way you can do that is by using stops. And if you don't use a stop, it's telling you that you're telling Mr. Market or Mrs. Market that you know more than she does. And believe me, boys and girls, that will never happen. She knows a lot more than we do. So make sure that you protect yourself. Some people, like Rich Anderson and other people that I've met, can use a desktop. In other words, they know that when the market reaches a certain level, the heat is hot, and so they exit the market. But most people do not have that discipline to do that. They start to second guess and add to losing positions and things like that. So you've got to have a, a program that allows you to at least protect yourself because uh, in the risk-reward e equation, the only thing that you can prepare or prepare yourself against is how much you're going to risk. When I was at Drexel, the first thing I did on the very first day, they sat down in orientation. See, they said, look, we've got a great group of clients here. We're a nice boutique firm. A lot of people are famous. Some people are super rich. He said, and they're all accustomed to winning and they're all accustomed to losing. But the one thing they're not accustomed to doing is to losing all their money. So as long as you don't lose all your money, your all their money, you're going to be okay. So set your limit. So my limit was 25%. If I lost 25% on somebody's money, I said, well, better move on. Fortunately, I was in gold and silver when the market was going up. So you didn't have to be a five beta kappa. You just buy it, hold on, put a stop. And two or three days, if it was against you, by golly, the third or fourth day, it was on its way back up. So I just happened to be catching a big trend, but we don't always get that lucky. 877-927-627. 6648. We'll see you next week, boys and girls. Remember, we're over some real key stuff now. Bye-bye.